Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm here to do an update on a topic I've done before, one of the first videos I made actually. I want to revisit the canon in academic music, and specifically how we teach it. Because in the last year or so, I've had some particular teaching experience, and lots of conversations around it that I want to draw on for the sake of wider discussion around canon. Let's get straight into it. First off, if you haven't watched my first video on canon, go do that. This is my 2022 update on lots of the themes and questions that I covered there. Why this topic now, you might ask? Hasn't everybody discussed the ideas of canon and it's been confined to the dustbin? Well, no, actually. In fact, there probably isn't a single hot topic in musicology that comes anywhere near close. I wondered about this update video when I recently published a review article which features the following phrase. The canon, the amorphous grouping of works deemed valuable for core academic study, though ever-changing and seemingly ever-escaping concrete definition. That ever-changing part has had me thinking for a while now. What's it like when we are actually tasked with teaching the canon and what are the challenges? I spend lots of my time dissecting ideas of classical canon and music, seeking to expand representation in terms of ethnic diversity and gender, exploring forgotten composers, etc. You only have to watch some of this channel or read some of my writing to see that. Musicology really has been dissecting the concept of canon for decades, well before even the new musicology of the 1980s or 90s, though many choose to associate it with that era. For the last five or six years, when starting music history classes with students, I focused on giving them tools to critique and then expand the canon for all sorts of good reasons. We focused on how the canon reflects pre-existing power structures along lines of gender, race and class. But time and again, an issue came up. Many students simply did not know the large body of music that was assumed to be the canon. I was giving them the tools to critique a body of knowledge, that is, familiarity with these pieces, that they didn't know in the first place. There's an element of class and privilege that accompanies the fact that only some students in any undergraduate class will already be intricately familiar with the classical canon to start critiquing it straight away, but I won't quite go into that here. As an attempt to level the playing field then, I've been teaching more canon, not less. Bear with me as I explain. In the last academic year, I taught a module aimed to address this exact issue. A history of the 19th century in 100 musical works based on a course specification by my former colleague, J.P.E. Harper Scott. How have these hundred musical works been picked? Well, take the three most commonly used textbooks on 19th century music, Taruskin, Dahlhaus, Samson. By going through these texts, and noting which works are mentioned most frequently, and then discussed in depth, we reach a list of a hundred pieces of music that these authors believe are representative of music in the 19th century. There are quite a few surprises here. In many cases, it didn't match up to my idea of what the 19th century canon was. There's loads of Maya beer, for instance, which I didn't expect. Why would this be the case? Because these are pieces thought by the authors to be historically important, but not necessarily musically popular anymore. All of them were musically popular at one point or another, though. Unsurprisingly, the list of 100 musical works from these three books is not diverse in any way. It's all white men. Seminar discussion over the ten weeks of this module was entirely based on why this would be the case, though, through colonialism, gender imbalances, the white racial frame, class prejudice, etc. In other words, the 19th century early musicologists and historians, the pioneers in the discipline, the concert programmers for what was performed, the people who began the first steps of a classical music museum culture of must-know music, made their list of composers reflect their own values, and as these scholars were all white European men, their list of must-know music naturally reflected their own social status. By the end of this module, the class started to construct our own complementary list of a hundred 19th century works by women and composers from ethnically diverse backgrounds, as well as having spent around 20 hours discussing just why this canon is so lacking in diversity. In other words, we were still being critical about the canon at the same time as students were immersing themselves in the traditional canon. The aim with this course then 
was to be able to move to a more in-depth critique of canon. Up to this point, I've been concerned that teaching students to critique something they don't necessarily know hasn't been helpful. And if you're interested, I have put together a Spotify playlist of all 100 works. Well, actually, it's, it's 103, and it's over 180 hours long. Spotify link in the description. As I've already mentioned, the module wasn't my idea, but it was the result of a significant amount of work by Professor J.P.E. Harper-Scott. I can't claim any credit for the concept, or for the legwork of number crunching to put the list of 100 works together. But I have adapted the original course design, and it has been a joy to be teaching it for the first time over the last year. What were the results of this kind of bulk canon teaching then? Well, I think they were mixed. With 100 pieces of music, I was only able to give around five minutes of attention to each one in class, leaving everything else up to individual listening outside of the classroom. What's the advantage of this kind of bulk canon teaching? Well, I hope it levels the playing field in terms of those students who might not have had the kind of embedded foundation of just what the classical music canon is. My sincere hope is that then we begin to move to the sophisticated critical thinking that seeks to unpick, expand and critique whatever the classical canon is. It's problematic, but it's here and it's up to us what we do with it. To begin with, though, students need to have an awareness of it before we can even begin to thoroughly critique it. So that's where I am up to with the prickly issue of teaching the canon in classical music. That's my 2022 update. What are your thoughts? Comment below or write on Twitter. If you enjoyed this video, check out others, like, subscribe, and most of all, tell your friends. Above all, thanks for watching, and bye. Mm -hmm.